questions. Those in the Zoom, in the chat room, be very flexible. Drop your comments and your questions and I'll tap them a little later. Starting off this conversation, I would love to start with um, Sandra here. We're discussing the value chain in coffee. There are very many investment opportunities that have been highlighted here and there. For starters, I want to know, um, why did you choose coffee? You left teaching and you went into coffee. Did you lose that mic? We are farmers, so will you bear with us? <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Sandra. Thank you very much. Uh, like I had uh, previously introduced, I'm Naka and Sandra Chiboli mm -hmm. from Sironko District. I'm the CEO of Karamugos Women Empowerment. Karamugos means cutting ropes. Mm -hmm. And these are not just ordinary ropes, but problems or challenges that were affecting women farmers mm. and a girl child in the areas surrounding Mount Elgon. Uh, like previously asked, why did I choose coffee mm. uh, over teaching? One, uh, there are so many teachers. I discovered that in my second year at university, that the course I had chosen at that time, there are so many people already you find somebody at 40 years but has not joined the government payroll. Mm. And those that we are teaching on the PTA payroll are sometimes paid 100,000 mm. or 50,000. By then? By then, I think even up to now, when oh. we look at uh, those village schools. Mm. Yeah, so it was a very, very, very big obstacle mm. in my career. And having grown up from a coffee farm where I saw most of the women are doing all the labor work which they were never paid. It is basically free labor. And I had also seen so many challenges that were affecting women uh, like domestic violence at that time, I would say uh, early uh, mid 90s because I'm born of 91. So 10 years there, I would see a number of women being carried on trays, coffee trays. By then, there were no border border uh, bicycles like today. So they would be lifted on the coffee tray to the nearest hospital. So our home was on, uh, on a roadside. Mm. So sometimes people came for drinking water. Mm. Uh, at least I got to hear some of the conversation. They would ask, will she make it? Some women were biting the, the tongue, mm. like she's unconscious. Mm. So I think when I reached senior two, I asked my mother, what was happening at that time? Why were those women biting their tongue unconscious? So she told me it was domestic violence. So being a girl, I grew up fearing that, because tomorrow I'm going to be a woman, mm -hmm. I may end up uh, going through yeah, in the same situation. you get married in the same region? <laughs> So I had all that fear, uh -huh. but uh, it helped me to, to, to grow the hard me. Oh. Wha how can I be better? Mm. How do I represent women? What was the problem? It was basically the uh, economic poverty. challenges, mm. poverty. Mm. Uh, the man becomes bitter because he does not have the money you're asking for. So mm. I said, no, I think <laughs> if I have my own money, mm. And I can sustain my own no life. No man is going to beat you. I think no man will beat me. Come on, guys. <laughs> round of applause for that. Th that is very interesting. So today, Sandra, when you look at the dynamics with the changing environment where we are, would you advise a youthful person like me or someone out there watching this today to join the Coffee Valley chain? Yes, I strongly advise. Why? Uh, because coffee is a growing sector in Uganda. Looking at the, the national coffee roadmap mm. that we have with UCDA mm -hmm. as a country, uh, the, uh, the vision we have is to supply at uh, export mm. uh, 20 million bags as a country. As a country. Mm. 
Unfortunately, we are at about 7%, wow. uh, 7 million bags uh -huh. that we are exporting. So meaning there is still high demand for coffee that we as a country, we mm. have not tapped into in. Mm. So if we have more youth coming mm -hmm. to grow coffee, mm. and also looking back at home, most of these farmers I'm working with in Vlamburi, Sironko, and Kapchora, mm. most of these farmers are aging 50 to 60 years. Mm. And these coffee trees have also grown old. So we as youth today in Uganda, mm -hmm. we need to go back to our villages and rehabilitate the coffee plantations. Thank you so much, Sandra. This is a very interesting conversation. I would then want to come to um, Nelson Tugume um, on, on, on the side. When you hear the zeal, Sandra speaks with you. I would like to start my farming tomorrow uh, because has is to is to find a solution against the social upheavals, domestic violence and poverty. Nelson, you as someone who is finding a solution, who has created this. Uh, uh, coffee city. What are the risks involved with sourcing the coffee we actually look at and holding the line at the cost of the service? We need to know those challenges because now she's telling us to come in. Yes, we'd like to come in, but what are the challenges on the time? Uh, one, um, thank you so much, uh, Andrew, and to all of us uh, out there listening to us. Uh, good afternoon. Mm. Uh, the risk involved there is that as a country, mm we can't only keep at thinking about production. Mm -hmm. Keep only at farming. You got to have your guys who are Wall Street, mm. who are pushers, who are business oriented, and then they just get to dissect this from the market angle. Mm -hmm. They just get this out of the market side mm -hmm. and then start moving to the farming side. What do I mean? Today, mm. Uh, for some numbers for you, mm. only America or United States of America has taken 350 million cups of coffee. Per annum? Per day. Per day. Yes. Nice. If this is $1 uh -huh. times 350 million cups, that's $350 million mm. a day. Mm. What my Sunday. sister has said, mm. for a year that we're exporting now to about six million bags. We've been at about four and a half million bags, mm. but now to about six million. Mm. We're getting about five hundred million dollars mm. for a year. The whole of Uganda. Mm. The American turn it in one day or two days and you think you're thinking? <coughs> Are we children of a lesser God? Mm. Is that what you want to tell me? And to me that's a big risk. Okay. If we don't understand the coffee from the cup, mm. if we don't understand our coffees from the market, what do we need to put in the market? Then where, is, where are the gaps, Nelson? So the gaps, I want to see the Minister of State for Privatization, mm. you know, get about 10 kilos of coffee on her next plane. Mm. Go within the bag. I've been a lot in all these countries. I see many Ugandans take bags of matoke, and you know, I give you oh yeah. 42 <laughs> kilos. I mean, I'm like, are you guys serious? Coffee is the second traded commodity in the world after mm. oil. Mm. Coffee is a gold crop. Today, Europe pushed about maybe 320 million cups mm -hmm. a day. So, you guys, are you for real? Okay. Now that th th so we must dissect it from the market to side, and uh -huh. then we start moving forward. So the, the moment right we only be at the farm level, uh -huh. then we're exporting our jobs. We're exporting our value. We're exporting ourselves. I thank you. Wow. That makes a lot of sense now. I think to those following the conversation, we are, we, what he's suggesting is we do reverse mechanics. We first get in the market, and then we can come back and we grow coffee, right? We can do it simultaneously, mm -hmm. because we're already doing production. Mm. But I would like to see the best scientists in Uganda, mm. not just stopping at the best drought-resistant crop. <laughs> when I go in the market in Seattle, oh yes. they ask me what is your quality cup test? Not the best drought resistant crop. <laughs> you understand what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. So the best PhDs in the country mm. must look for innovations that will touch what the market wants. Not what is just local here. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much, Nelson. <laughs>
Um, now, uh, you'll help me sanitize the mic before you pass it on to patients here. Um, I, I will come to the minister a little later because now this is putting government at a very... In one day, USA gets $300 million by one cup. Patience, as MasterCard, I've seen you do quite a lot of things. The young, the young drive, that is something that is you're so passionate about as MasterCard Foundation. What is missing with regards to, um, uh, should I call it partnership? Should I call it pushing? Is it the innovation? Is it the lack of the capacity? Uh, are our youth not so engaging in one or the other? Thank you so much, Andrew. It's mm. a bit difficult to speak after, after him. <laughs> 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 but as MasterCard Foundation, uh, we are only about one thing, mm. enabling young people, yep. especially young women, mm. to get into what we are calling dignified and fulfilling employment. And agriculture is one of those sectors that we are considering in Uganda as a key driver for employment for young people. Mm -hmm. And coffee is one of our priority crops. So when you say what is missing, okay, the first thing we have recognized, uh, we have heard from young people because we do a lot of listening to the young people, want to understand what their needs are, what their passions are. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with the mindset. Okay. Agriculture in general has been looked at as something for the poor, the uneducated. I Backward. mean, you've seen all these pictures that come in magazines or newspapers of a farmer. Very it, will be <laughs> it will be of a very dirty, uh, very miserable person. Yeah. But we do have a young... Sandra is here. Ladies, yes. round of applause. <laughs> so if we can change that mindset and portray agriculture, even coffee farming, as mm. something that young people can engage in mm -hmm. and proudly make a living out of, uh -huh. then we shall have done our duty. So it's partnerships like uh, private sector foundation mm. that work with Inspire Africa Coffee mm. that are going to turn this narrative around. We have wow. been here and I've seen a lot of products out there mm. where young people, okay, maybe if they don't have the land to produce, there are a lot of other nodes along the value chain where mm. they can participate. Wow. So there are a lot of opportunities out there for young people to engage in agriculture, to engage in coffee production, to engage in coffee, uh, other nodes al along the, the entire value chain. So in terms of what is missing are those models mm. that can portray that agriculture can actually be uh, attractive, mm -hmm. that coffee farming can actually be attractive and actually put money in the pockets of young people. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much, MasterCard. Coming to the Minister, Sandra, you, you could sanitize the mic and then we hear government speaking now. Uh, this is Honorable Evelyn Anita. She's youthful. She's traveled around the globe um, and we're sure she has our answers. Honorable, what strategic investments are there for the youth today that are availed by the government that can amplify the coffee value chain? Oh, thank you very much for that question. But mm. probably before I answer that question, I, mm. I just want to commend Nelson mm. for starting Inspire Africa Coffee. Congratulations. Yeah. You are an inspiration to the young people. When I was just touring through uh, your facility, the coffee city, I was very, very inspired. Mm -hmm. But I was, again, more uh, confident and, and uh, happy on my side as government that uh, you are not by yourself. Government is already working with you. So we need to, for starters, recognize that through private sector foundation, and, and I thank Nelson for acknowledging that because so many of us do not actually uh, uh, recognize the interventions of government oh yeah. uh, in our, uh, our businesses, mm. uh, in all our endeavors. But I want to thank uh, Nelson that you recognize uh, government support through private sector foundation and that's why private sector foundation is here through Uganda Investment Authority. You invited government because you know that you've been given the support and uh, you have the enabling environment. So for starters, what is a, a, a one young people would call a tiring speech, which mm. is that the government provides the enabling environment. The first enabling environment is peace and security. Mm -hmm. But many young people would not like to hear that. Mm. They think it's a given, just like God gave us uh, <laughs> air, oxygen to breathe. <laughs> it's not a given. If you, if you think that it's a given, just go to South Sudan and see what is happening. Oh yes. Then, then you'll appreciate that actually the government of Uganda gives that enabling environment. Mm. But away from that, just to answer your questions mm. uh, directly, uh, our president uh, started this campaign uh, of, uh, of, of, first of all, 
taking our, our coffee, in, first of all, increasing the bags mm -hmm. uh, that we, 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 we sell to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, the figures were very, very low. We were talking about 3.5 million uh, bag of bags of 60 kg mm. uh, that we were exporting. When he started this uh, initiative of which he called Copy uh, Roadmap, mm. and he decided to get uh, Operation Wealth Creation to go out there and distribute seedlings. And um, Sa Sandra? Mm -hmm. Sandra here will attest to this, that she's the beneficiary of getting the seedlings mm. to be able to plant it. And so OWC, which really uh, upheld the President's Directive of distributing seedlings, mm. it helped, it saw our coffee um, bags that we're having grown out to the seven million bags that they're talking about. Mm. Although it is very, very low, we are just talking about getting on the uh, 559.6 million mm. worth uh, US dollars for the, uh, for the six million or the seven million bags mm. that we sell. But I learned from, uh, from uh, Nelson here, and I really would like to listen to Mel Nelson more because Nelson and the farmer here are here today to inspire more other farmers mm -hmm. and add the value, add the voice to the voice of His Excellency the President for many other Ugandans to come. Because mm -hmm. when you hear it from a political voice and you're hearing, okay, it's President Museveni, you're like, oh, that is NRM speaking. Mm -hmm. Now we are speaking without political colors. We are, we are speaking money. Mm, yes. And as you know, money does not have any political party. It is mm -hmm. for everyone. So I really... <laughs> <laughs> I hear so, you. So I, I really would like to first take the parties out of this mm. because through the party lines and the party leadership, we have been able to grow the, the bags yeah. to 7 million and get Uganda uh, 559.26 mm. uh, million US dollars. Mm. Now we want to hear the private sector, young people like, like uh, Nelson. Nelson and young people like Sandra mm. telling us the value. And this is why I was very excited to come here. Honorable, and that yes. makes a lot of sense. But you see, Nelson made a very simple math. Any Ugandan out there would be very intrigued. One cup per day in US is one dollars, and they make three hundred million dollars per day as a country. Three hundred and fifty million dollars per day. Where is the gap? Where is government missing the gap? We, we appreciate for the environment, the conducive environment for living and doing business. We really appreciate it. But where? are the gaps where government has failed to possibly support the coffee farmers? Is it at the board level? Is it as an industry that they need leadership, maybe shake up? What do we need to fix as a country to see this from that global perspective? The gap is very, very clear and it's so glaring. It's right in front of us. It mm. is that we are exporting our coffee beans raw. If you're going to be exporting the beans, the coffee beans, mm. you're just going to fetch your return on investment will be very low. True. Now, you have to do value addition. Mm. Now, the value addition that he is already talking about, he's mm. talking about this coffee, the mm. one, just let me hold my own coffee, Inspire Africa Coffee, he's mm. called it Juza. Mm. Now, he's done value addition on this. The coffee that he's talking about, the Americans selling in the tune of? Per day? You can imagine. Uh, they're not selling the coffee beans. We are selling coffee beans, but they are selling the processed coffee. Mm. They've already added value. Mm. So we have to invest on the value addition. Mm. And um, uh, Nelson just made uh, his request to government, and that is, if you give me more support, mm -hmm. first of all, I'm already supporting the farmer. Thank you so much. And the farmer is being able to get access to market, and this is the domestic the market. market. But the coffee that the farmer is selling to Nelson is in smaller quantities and Nelson is not able to buy it in bigger quantities because he's not in the end of the value addition. True. So if we support Nelson more, and this is what we want to do, mm -hmm. through our innovation, Ministry of uh, Science and Innovation, through Ministry of Finance, we have now put aside, uh, thanks to our President's Directive, that we should put small, uh, for small enterprises, 100 billion just to support their businesses and. Nelson is going to benefit from this. Mm. Uh, and my very good friend, um, uh, Wekesa, Wekesa here, has started an agricultural uh, factory mm. to do value addition. Because initially, we're exporting all this for f f without paying money. And through UDB, we've invested a trillion. Mm. And we're now going to invest 200 billion just for the small, mm. forget about the medium enterprises. Mm. So 
as government, we do this because we want them to do the final value addition, mm -hmm. add value. Don't be a, pr a country that is known for green beans or <laughs> coffee beans, but be known for next Uganda or next coffee, but mm. which is next Uganda. Honorable, r right there when you say, um, uh, round of applause, that is commitment there. When, when you hint on names like Nelson, Tugumi, and Amos Wakese, these are um, preferably large-scale farmers or uh, value addition companies, I'm looking at Ha in Bulambuli, and the money where it's going, it's going in the UD um, the Development Bank and all that. And we saw what happened when the stimulus was given out previously to the SMEs and all. The ones who are very micro, like Ha, could not access the funds. How able are the other farmers going to be in position to access the funds? Nelson, Amos, and the ones um, who are possibly a little bit scaled up, how can they access those kind of funds? Th th that is why the president directed that, forget about the money you've already invested in agriculture credit facility. Mm. You remember that we started a conversation of starting an agriculture bank. Perfect. Because we want to see how we can get the money to the people. Mm. But... We thought that through the banks, we were still going to be working around the, the people who know how to read and speak excellent English, like Wekesa mm. and, uh, and Nelson. But the one who is in the village, mm. who does not know how to use the internet, who mm. does not speak good English, mm. will not be, who does not even know he has never stepped or she has never stepped in a bank, mm. will not be able to benefit. So we did two things as government. One is come up <laughs> with the parish model, taking the money and ask the people at the parish, because the people are in the villages and the only place where the conversion is, is the parish, mm. which is nearer to them even before they go to the sub-counties. Mm. So what you hear as popular government parish model is where we put money for the farmers to select their own mm. enterprises. Mm. So this, this the, the, the uh, pardon me, not the farmers to select mm. their enterprises, the citizens, in that parish to select their enterprises. What do you want to do if government takes for you money mm. at the parish? And they've put 30 million Ugandan ceilings start up mm -hmm. in your parish. Mm. Can you get this money and be able to buy other inputs? Okay, Operation Wealth Creation has already given you mm. the, the inputs. Mm. But Sandra will tell you the inputs or the seeds are not enough. Mm -hmm. Sandra you will tell you that you need to pay the the labor the casual laborers, you need to buy uh, insecticides or pesticides, mm. uh, you need to, to look after the garden. Mm. And he mm. talks about, uh, Nelson just talked about planting this coffee with the Mar Brazilian model. Mm. How many farmers in Uganda know about the Brazilian model? Oh they yeah. just plant. Mm. So now that money will help them to be able to plant in a very uh, strategic way that can be able to fetch for them more money. Oh. Remember that for you to get more money for your coffee, to get the screed 18, mm. first of all, I need to make this point. Our neighboring countries, one of our neighboring countries that I would not want to mention, sells... Honorable for purposes of clarity and business <laughs> as a region. <laughs> 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 it is better you mention the country. <laughs> no, you, that is for you to do your research. I'll hope to hear the name when you're doing the anchoring in the night. So <laughs> they, they sell less coffee bags oh yes. than Uganda. Mm. But they fetch more money for their country, True. more dollars for their country. And True. why? It is because, mm. it is because the way they plant, they've taught their farmers to plant it in a different way. Mm. Their screed is screed 18. Mm. Our screed is less than 18, it's 13, it's 12. Mm. Uh, so that affects the quality of our coffee. And I like the point you said. Uh, our focus is in a different direction. Drought resistant plant. No, this is not about drought. This, I, I really love that, and we should not laugh it off. Yeah. And I really, I'm happy you said it in my face. Mm. And I want to tell you the ones who are responsible. Now I'm speaking for my government, and I will also speak in, uh, in fr to, to my government, mm. quite frankly, in a very open way, the way you've said it, because this is the only way we'll benefit our citizens. Yeah. And this, what you're saying, is what our president has been saying. What are you scientists? government scientists doing to mm. improve our yields. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Honorable Anite. You've exhausted a couple of things. When you clap, I s assume that you've seen where the money is. The hashtag is uh, Coffee City uh, 2021 or Coffee UG. Whoever is clapping, whether you're home or on Zoom, maybe she's stuck called something that is to do with money. Sandra, what the minister is saying, I could read your body language. You were a little bit hesitant at times, too. You're like, mmm. 
um, you as a farmer on the ground with what you see, don't worry, I'll give you this mic, okay. Um, you as a farmer on the ground, what do you make of all these, especially access to credit facilities to, to run all these? Then how can we add value to the coffee chain in Bulambuli that you don't need to come all the way to Kampala and all? Thank you very much. I'll start with the last question mm. because it has always been my heart desire mm. to speak to the government. There it is. And <laughs> I have <laughs> Honorable Anite. <laughs> Uh, not yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, Carry on, uh, Sandra. I'll start on the issue of the value addition. Mm -hmm. uh, Honorable Anite, I want to request you mm. for a roastery in Bali, in the store park. Mm. I will choose Bali because it will benefit the youth in Capchora, mm -hmm. Buko, mm -hmm. Sironko, mm. Vlambuli. Manafa, all those districts around the wow. Elgon zone. Mm. Because when we are talking about the, uh, the value addition, mm. like Nelson said, other countries are busy consuming our coffee. Mm. Well, here in the country, we have ignored local consumption of coffee. And you know why? Mm -hmm. Because we do not have uh, roasting facilities uh, uh, a coffee roasting machine goes for over 50 million. Only. Not only to a youth. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking and to government. Yeah, government. Yeah. So uh, the packaging machine, mm. the grinding machine, the facility alone. Mm. I want to assure you, Madam Honorable, mm. that... Karamugos, we have started mm. value addition. Okay. We are having a coffee called Zesui Dream Coffee mm. that has Z been Z named Z Zesui. Meaning? Uh, Zesui is a hill, mm -hmm. one of the, the ridges of Mount Elgon. Mm. Uh, it's next to Wagagai. Okay. But this area brings misery in my life mm. because very few girls complete P7. Because wow. schools are far from each other. That's deep, eh? So as much as I'm doing business in coffee, mm. but how do I bring my uh, the unknown girls mm. in Sironko, mm. in Vlambuli, to a known world? Like we are saying, farmers are not able to read mm. and write. Mm. How are they going to continue like that if even their own children are taking their path? So how do we add value on coffee? Mm -hmm. Today, Karamugos has to transport coffee first from Zesui the to Dudley. The government is mm. here. <laughs> from uh, from Zesui yeah. to, to Budadli, to Busita, uh -huh. where I'm being order processing. Mm. And then from there. How many there, kilometers are those? Those are about 15 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes this coffee is carried on the back or on the head. That the, all those kilometers. So the transport alone, the transport costs mm. incurred from the farm to a processing unit mm. is already big. And then after drying the coffee, Sandra has to carry the coffee either using YY coaches or a taxi from Dudley. I have to carry coffee up to Churad. Kabanyo. Madam, you can see, even Churad is there, the address for Churad. So all these costs involved mm. are going to end up ma making this coffee very expensive for the locals, for the locals mm. to afford. Mm. You get that? Mm. So it is one of the reasons, I think, mm. that most uh, young people who would have loved to tap into the, the roasting, packaging, and distribution, because we have so many hotels mm. in Uganda, mm. We have these uh, small kioskis. Mm. Then we have also guest, how many guest houses are consuming coffee? Why are you looking at me about guest houses? <laughs> <laughs> so it really becomes a big, big challenge. Yeah. But today I see a, a very big opportunity mm. that my burning desire mm. will be answered. I think today I'll be going with the, the minister provinces. is here. Uh, thank you so much. And I think she has a point. Uh, Honorable, it's very clear that the distance and the costs of operation are very high for the local farmers to actually get involved and uh, the packaging by the time it comes if they tell me it's 40k me me ugandan 
<laughs> I will just go for anything else than this. Um, now, this comes back to Mastercard Foundation as one of our key partners. The minister here alluded to something to do with the mindset of our farmers, even the models we're using. She didn't name the country, but as a proud East African, <laughs> I am sure we, we all tapped into that because the leaders there are intentional. And um, the leadership from the grassroots to the national level, they're intentional about this. Mastercard, how can you come in and we try to alleviate the issue of ignorance on the ground and how best they can form their own support structures that by the time they reach the parish model, they are very organized. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable. Thank you, uh, uh, Sandra, for bringing out those issues. So um, at the foundation, we work with different partners. Mm. And we uh, establish these partnerships because we have a common vision, mm -hmm. a common goal of supporting young people to engage in activities that will help them to earn income and live dignified lives. So. Mm. We, uh, we work with the partners who come to us and come up with different ideas that are responsive to the needs of the young people, the needs of the, the communities, uh, the needs of the markets. Mm -hmm. So all the interventions that we are, uh, we are involved in, right from skills development, access mm -hmm. to our finance, uh, access to business development services, and a whole host of, of, of things that young people need to engage in production, marketing, value addition, mm. all those are things that we have our eye on. And okay. so how do we do this? How do we make sure that we are reaching the people on the grassroots? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, all the things we do, all the interventions we are involved in are aligned to the government. Mm. And so when the parish development model came up, we were very excited about it. And it's something we're already beginning to talk about, mm. that whatever interventions we are going to conduct going forth, going forward, mm -hmm. we want to use that parish development model mm -hmm. because that is the only way we shall be able to reach the grassroots people mm -hmm. who are, uh, at this point have been missing out on a number of opportunities that would ideally enable them to contribute to the economy even at that level. So a number of different ideas, innovations are coming up, one from the young people because they tell us mm -hmm. how they want to be involved, how they want to be mobilized, mm -hmm. how do the young women want to be approached how do they want to be skilled? What enterprises do they want to get involved in? So we listen to them. Mm -hmm. We do not go to partners with our own idea, yeah. but we listen to the what the partners come up with and to what the young people need and what they think can work for them and the best way to approach them and the best way to engage them. Mm -hmm. That is something that comes from them. We are open as long as we are aligned to our common vision. We yeah. are able to work with you. I love this, but, uh, but patience, w when you speak that, speaking to someone here in Kampala, imagine a youth who is a farmer in Mitoma, in uh, Toroko district, watching now, and would like to know who are your partners. Do you cover the nation? Mm -hmm. um, th they need to know if you're in the east, who is your partner in the east? If you're in the south, who is your partner? Mm -hmm. when, when you speak, I can walk to your office and um, we could possibly have this conversation, but I'm looking at the farmer, Kugurawund, who is excited about this, that this opportunity has availed itself, mm -hmm. and how do they come through? Do they have to write to MasterCard? Because now that is on a strategic level. Mm -hmm. I want to know who is my partner in the east, in the north, in the west, in central, in southeast. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. So at the moment, we are working across the whole country. Okay. We are open. We are not selective on the districts or regions where we, we work because young people are found everywhere, Indeed. and we want to reach them. So at the moment, uh, the, the program is a relatively new one. Mm. We have about seven uh, partners currently, mm. and the longest one, I think, is about one and a half years old. Mm. So we are not that very old in the country. And so for the next five or ten years, we are looking forward to engaging with many more partners mm. and bringing on board many more young people. Our target in Uganda is to reach at least three million young people at 70% young women, including refugees and young people with disability. So wherever they are located, wherever, uh, if they can be organized, if they can be, uh, find somebody who will reach out to them mm. and uh, come out, reach out to us, uh, we'll be happy to work with them. So far we are working with the likes of Private Sector Foundation, we are working with Goody Leisure Farm that covers many districts, we are working with uh, NSSF, we are working with um, uh, we are working with Innovation Village. We are working with uh, 
Goal, Uganda, and a number of other partners. So how do they get to us? Mm -hmm. They can, uh, we have a website where they can actually be able to uh, 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 go in there, find out about our program, the sectors we cover, the activities we do, and reach out to us. We have had a number of them actually reaching out to us. And sometimes if we can't take them on directly, we have had the opportunity to refer them to uh, other partners like PSFQ to okay. actually engage. Wow. So I know you're going to say that maybe what about those who can't read? What about those who can't access internet? Again, that's sure. what was coming. <laughs> because th th those are the biggest numbers on the ground. And she wants us to join agriculture. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are also uh, cognizant of the fact that there are a lot of young people there who have no education at all, who have no access maybe to digital tools where they can maybe access internet. Mm. But we do believe that at parish level, surely, mm. there must be that person who, ca who has a cell phone who can be able to, uh, you know, uh, support a young person actually access uh, mm. our 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 website and actually be able to reach us. They do that a lot and they can assure you we always respond either as individuals mm. or um, organizations. So that is something that we are open to and we are always glad for that opportunity mm. to listen from the young people, to hear what they need and, and share mm. what we can be able to offer them. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, that is uh, Vyara Hunger Patience, the lead agriculture from Mastercard Foundation. Um, if I could just have uh, the sanitizer here and the mic. I, when, when you speak about opportunities, I want to talk to Ziwa. Uh, Ziwa, if you could come uh, in front here and, and, and you, you possibly give. The minister said there are opportunities. Mastercard Foundation says there are innovation hubs and all they're working with. You as someone leading a big number of youths around um, the ghettos, the K-zones, what are some of your challenges you faced in tapping into the opportunities the minister and MasterCard is alluding to? Uh, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Sadat Zaga, mm. Ziwa. Zaga, you can face the people that side. You're live, by the way. Okay. Mm. Uh, once again, I'm Sadat Zaga, Ziwa, mm. uh, the Gang Peace Ambassador. I work for Ngabo Youth Friendly Services Center that looks at promoting the polite of the ghetto people by harnessing their potential to productivity. Uh, I also work with NYAP, National Youth Advocacy Platform, where we talk to the young farmers all over the country. Uh, through, I, I'm so surprised and happy that uh, this conversation is talking money. Mm. And the only word I can understand better is money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and as well, uh, I, I've said I'm so surprised to hear that uh, uh, farming is, is, is perceived as a dirty venture. Mm. And I'm asking myself, uh, scrap collection and farming, which is more dirty? Mm. If, mm. You oh com yeah. you, if you, 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 you compare. Mm. So in, in, in the ghetto, we do a lot of scrap collection. Mm. We, we do sleep in trenches. Mm. And I think uh, farming is not as dirty as sleeping in the trench. So, for, purposes of so time? for the purposes of time, uh, I would like to, to know and appreciate the entire processes that government uh, is undertaking to ensure that, yes, we can gain the value chain. Mm. But one of the biggest challenges we have in the ghetto mm. is uh, defining who we are before we, we, before we even get the opportunity. Okay. By the virtue that you've stepped into an office, they describe you by the looks, by the hair, the, the panties, and everything. And we are Montua Wansi, sure. we don't matter. Mm. Yet, when I listen to these conversations, I'm seeing a lot of potential for us to tap into, because if I have the money, I can go to the villages and get that raw coffee, then do it in Kampala, find some uh, how the ways of drying it and everything. Yes, I can still do it, mm. though I'm in the ghetto. So. What are those intended programs for the government? Mm. I, I know me, Honorable, you were once a youth leader. Mm. She's still youthful. She's leading us in investment. <laughs> yeah, actu actually. <laughs> so what are those intended programs mm. and investment opportunity that you have for the people, for example, in the K-Zones, Kamocha, Katanga, Katwe, Kinawata, Kakiwunya, Kasambu, 
what are those opportunities for us as K-Zones in that because our nature is we hate of writing, CGU fill this form, CGU what, what, come back tomorrow, then a meeting the other day, then th those processes. So what are those swift programs and opportunities do, we, do you have for us as ghetto? Uh, Honorable, you can respond to that as we're finalizing with the broadcast on the other side. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy to meet you. And uh, I, I, I learned that you, you lead over 20,000 young people. Yeah. Uh, I actually there's K zones that you talk about. And uh, the one the K zone that I visit is the Kamocha. And, and and the truth is I think everyone has to everyone who has a decent office or who has a decent earning mm -hmm. has to go and see what uh, uh, my brother here, what's his name again? Ziwa Ziwa. Ziwa Zaga is talking about. They live in a very, very sorry state. Mm -hmm. It's it's um it is and the, the people who live in those ghettos are not just people from uh from let's say Kampala they're from all over Uganda mm. uh, I did actually experience my experience in those ghettos that we as government have to do something for them now as government we don't lament we we come up with the strategies and so of how we can help them so Yes, the young people in the ghetto, hearing from their voices what they want to, to government to do for them first, because the majority of them are into singing, music, and uh, arts, and all that. So what they came to us as government and requested us to do for them is to support their enterprises, mm. uh, which is their biggest enterprise right now being uh, the music enterprise. So before you ask me what additional things should we do for them, what are the opportunities there, they already told us what they want us to do for them. So we, as government, uh, had this discussion in cabinet and uh, put them under Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development. Coming up with the budget, and the paper will be presented in, 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 in cabinet, to see how they can support those young people in the K-zones, because they have clear initiatives and clear programs that they want us to do. Apart from the general government uh, initiatives to the citizens of Uganda, they came up with specialized uh, ideas that they want government to fund. And in principle, as government and uh, the head of state, uh, President Seven has already agreed to supporting them. And the Minister of Gender will come with uh, a paper with their desires. And I really would like to get your contact so that if your views of what you want to be as given as support, now that I know you have over 20,000 young followers, if they are not captured, then those are captured. But uh, the truth is, away from uh, the support that you need directly going to the K-zones, th there are immense opportunities the government has for the young people of this country. And I'm happy that this debate is happening around the time that we are, are going to celebrate the Youth Day, which is just on 12th of, of August. I am a senior youth, now I'm 36, so I'm not a youth anymore, uh, because I was a youth, a youth leader from the village level up to district, and then I grew up the, the ranks, and the government supported me to becoming a youth minister, now minister of investment in finance. Finance, we're talking about finance. So I want to tell you that there are so many opportunities for the young people here in this country. We even have funds through the youth ministry that we give to the young people separate mm. and 60 percent of our initiatives that we have as government and our programs we say we must target the young people not only giving the young people jobs mm. uh, uh, in boards which is which has come as our policy now and giving young people jobs in uh, ministries department and agencies mm. but you know that uganda generally is a youthful population honorable as, as you just look look at the number of ministers mm who are young people. But this is, I'm just mentioning for you things which are high end, but mm. of course you do appreciate that I started with your views. Mm. So just to end this, because I know you have so many other speakers, mm. uh, is that yes, we have plans to support you because you have requested it separately mm. and the paper is being worked by ministry. Thank you so much, minister. Uh, we give that a round of applause to all those in the ghettos. Those ones watching online, allow me just get to questions. Uh, Chegombe Ju, Ju, Jumia 
says that I uh, thank you so much, Honorable I mean, PG, and thanks for this conversation. My question to the Honorable Minister, how do we beat the paperwork? We have ideas, but the issue um, that has been highlighted, signs here, sign here, then can we equally talk about the corruption at the parish levels where you write proposals and they have to get a kickback off the money they are giving you? Th these are youths in the parish model now. <laughs> You see, I, I first want to tell young people something, mm. that we should not run away from the paperwork. Okay. Because without the paperwork, then mm. you're not even going to be very efficient with your business. Mm. I want he, you to give the microphone to him he, mm. to tell you how he's been able to be a successful business person. If you don't do record keeping, mm. there's no way your business is going to thrive. How will mm. you know your input vis expenses vis-a-vis -vis profit. You will mm. not know. So mm. let us not run away from the paperwork. Okay. Sign here, sign here is a must. Mm. But it should not come at the expense of, because there are some, this sign here, sign here, I hope they're not talking about the corruption one. Because mm. there are those corrupt ones, they say, first put a stone on my paper before, <laughs> with meaning that you put money. That is the corruption that yes. I really should not, it should mm. be very efficient, transparent, and it should move. Really, they should accept. Mm. That's why we introduced UPE, that you should go to school and read and write. Mm -hmm. But now, if you're, not go if you're going to run away from signing papers just mm. because you feel it is tedious work, mm. then really, you will not even be credible to access a bank loan. Okay. Honorable no bank will give you money if you don't keep proper book, if you don't do proper bookkeeping. Uh -huh. They will not give you money. Absolutely. Uh, tapping into more conversations uh, here, Irene, I think your question was a little bit, uh, I think she's just pissed. She has tried so much, and Irene, stay calm. Um, Rachel Namanda, I see you. Let me just talk to Nelson to come here. The tweets are a little bit bitter when it gets to youth policies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's <laughs> talk coffee, um, uh, and I'll respond to those ones a little later. Please I appreciate their bitterness. Let, let's give the tweets calm, sure. and we will we, we get into the conversation. Nelson, when the minister speaks about this vis-a-vis uh, -vis what Sandra and the patients allude to, we need to know who are our competitors in the value chain of coffee. And how do we beat them? Now that we have MasterCard, PSFU, and the other sponsors and partners who can actually go on the grassroots and have a mindset shift for our people, the support of the government. Now, how do we beat our competitors? But Kwanzaa, who are our competitors now? Our Andrew, before our competitors, mm. allow me to say thanks to Honorable Banite. Oh, yes. Please. Having allowed to come and uh, visit us at the Coffee City. Uh, MasterCard Foundation, PSFU. This is a great key or engine mm -hmm. to the, this innovation that you're seeing today. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell all of your viewers that the Coffee City is not for Inspire Africa, for Nelson. Mm -hmm. It is for Sandra. It's mm -hmm. for that farmer. Yep. It's for that person out there. And that's why today, to me, it's a great day for me as a person, but also for the Coffee City that we have a Ugandan hub, a Ugandan coffee hub today mm. that will bring us at the conversation. And I would quickly even say mm. that the best innovation ever happened in the world mm. happened on a cup of coffee. Not on a bottle of beer, <laughs> not on a whiskey, <laughs> but on a cup of coffee. We meet on a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thank you. And therefore, when you say, who are our competitors? competitors? Mm. We are our own competitors. Coffee City is here, mm. and the next thing you're doing on Twitter is mm. bashing it. You're bashing your own mother, your own grandmother, mm. not to ever get that best value out of their coffee. Mm. We are the own problem. Mm -hmm. Until we change that mindset mm. and start working together, then I will agree with you then that we can compete favorably. But to take it a notch higher, and like even the minister said, young people, once again, these paperwork, we must understand them. I call it data. Mm. You have data, you have the next currency. Mm. You have data, you will thrive. Mm. You have data, you will not get that block. I want to tell you this cup, only in the United States, a $64 billion industry, about eight times of our GDP. Wow, eight times. This employs over one million young people. This cup. So if you don't have data, mm. what next? And therefore, the paperwork, we must understand it. Mm. Guys, success has no shortcut. Absolutely. 
we get to understand and do these things. Yeah. So let us not uh, be, not, uh, let us tell our people the truth. Mm. Let's not deny ourselves to know how the world mm. is heading. You know, you're talking about the partition of Africa. Other people are saying the scramble of Africa, isn't it? Yes. Other people are thinking of going to the moon. So what am I trying to say? <laughs> That we must understand these things. Nelson pulled it on that. Anyway, that, that was a hit. <laughs> People are scrambling to go to the moon. And we still teaching Scramble of Africa, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. But what I'm trying to say is mm. the competitors that we've been talking about and what we need to understand, I again take it to the market. Oh, yes. I'm going to say it again to the minister. Mm. And if the president is seeing me, he's watching. He's Mr. Watching. President, mm. you're not having 50 kilos on your jet. Mm. Going to Russia, mm. going to wherever you're going, Turkey. then we are not in business. Mm. If the minister is not having 50 kilos, mm. guys, oil will come and go. Coffee will be with us for the next 300 years. Wow. I can tell you, if we enhance this coffee value chain, this gold crop, we don't need our oil. This we can leave it for our next generation who are need to come. Mm. But the idea is to understand the gimmick in the marketing. Mm. The minister said, I know she didn't mention the country. Mm. Did you know, friends, that we, have, we are an 80% robusta growing, but the 20% of Arabicas are bigger than Rwanda, Kenya, Burundi, DRC, Tanzania combined. Arabica. Our Arabicas. But you go in the market and tell me where you're going to... Where the Ugandan Arabicas? All those five countries combined, we have more Arabicas. Let me tell you, let me give you the next thing. Mm. Uganda has the best robustas in the world. If you go on Google, and we're going to be doing the next capping. Mm. When you're capping coffee, use what you call protocols, or those papers you see cup testers use. Mm. Do you know what is there? There is a Ugandan flag. All over the world, all those protocols use. Mm. They were done here. I've been telling the Italians and everyone, mm. we are your source. You can never take us like this anymore. But how Let us go on the table mm -hmm. and discuss all of us how we can benefit. Mm. I quickly I uh, relate you. with uh, Sandra. Mm. I have, I'm, I'm a second coffee generation farmer mm. from Tungamo. And those of Tungamo listening to me, you know Mr. B you know Mr. Biyabare Maka, Nyema, mm. our, our Jovia, uh, Chikamureta. All those are coffee farmers. In These the are coffee farmers mm. that I think were better, but today I see them dwindling. What's the cause? There is a study. Mm. I can tell you. Mm -hmm. You can look it out. Those of you want to go with the data. Mm. Showing some of the coffee companies where they have been around, especially in your place in Zeu, mm. in Zomba, been to all those places mm. in Paida, looking for coffee in Zoka Forest. And places where local investors have imagined and say, let us come together. The farmers around there take their children to good school. They drive better cars. They go to good hospitals. Mm. But where some coffee people who I think for some time are not taking us to the next level, mm. the farmers are grassing. The farmers are not doing well. Mm. So what do I mean? Until, like he, she said, our farmers start understanding coffee from the cup. Mm. When my mother got born again out of her coffee being rained on, mm. some fift maybe 15 years ago, my mother used to leave her, her coffee and pick the beans and the millet mm. when it's about to rain. But now mm. she understands, oh, this is a beverage. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're going further ahead and say, can we change this mindset? I know most Lely is looking at me. They're mm. saying, what are you talking about? When we take coffee, we get dry. You understand? You've heard about that myth. I don't want to go there, Nelson. Okay. I don't want us to go there, <laughs> but I'm saying, that's why we're going into a Yes. of cosmetic. Scrub, um. So if you can't drink it, we drink it through the foot massage. Mm -hmm. And that is adding value addition, mm. creating jobs, adding value on our kill of coffee. Mm -hmm. I could tell you the number, since this is about a meeting of money. Mm. You know, Let, let's talk figures. It's now. about <laughs> money, isn't yes. it? Eh? A farmer right now, she will tell you she gets from Robusta, mm. gets 4,200. 
Even oh. it. Mm. But when I bring it and roast it and do a few things, mm. I sell it to a hotel at 35,000 shillings. That's almost seven times. You yeah. see how the value Goes and up. the jobs you're creating and the taxes for the country? Mm -hmm. But when I also a little add more mm -hmm. and sell it in the cup, I'm s we're selling this cup at 2,000. Mm. Isn't it? Eh? Mm. Do you know what that means? In one kilo of in one cup of coffee, mm. we get if, if you we get 120 cups, 120 cups times 2,000, that is 240 a kilo. Along the value chain, you're employing another wow. 10. Guys, round of applause. Other that people. is money. <laughs> you I'm understand? Them, yes. So as I conclude, uh, mm. because I know we run out of time. Yes. Let's understand this math. Mm. This thing about money is not rocket science. Now, Nelson, with yes. all that you're having, yes. does your leadership in your industry of coffee understand these dynamics? Yes. And what are they doing that people like you with this kind of data can be cascaded down to farmers like Sandra in Bulambuli? How do we, because now you have this data, you have the, the, the coffee board, you, you have all these support structures. How do we use them to cascade it down to them? Number one, mm. Honorable Minister, you must start surrounding yourself with businessmen, with people that understand business. Uh, I'm happy that uh, at UIA, mm. uh, and I can, I can say this on air, mm. that UIA is going to be the next big thing. They are very digital. <laughs> that right. I can tell you. I applied for my investment license and got it in one day. Online. <laughs> that is true. I never gave lunch. Mm. This was only online. <laughs> this was only what? Online. And it wasn't me actually. It was my staff doing that. I was just helping them. Yes, that's wow. You, you understand what I mean? I hear you. So, Madam Honorable, mm. I want to say the moment you start surrounding yourself with people who understand business, mm. you're, going business. you're going to go so much miles. Mm. The moment I go to your ministry or to any ministry mm. and they look at me, who is this rogue mm. coming to eat our money? Mm. You're making a lot of profit. Mm. A United States president is determined on how many companies he has grown and how much profit those companies have made. Oh, yeah. But here when you start making money, it's a sin. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Nelson, because Uganda is African. <laughs> this is not mm. right. Mm. It's good to make money, mm -hmm. friend. Yes. And let's make it in billion. As long as we are making it in the right way. In the right way. Thank you so much, Nelson. <laughs> money makers, thank you so much for the round of applause. But Chamagelo, mm. lastly, yes. I want to say mm. thank you so much, Honorable Banite. Yes. Government. Mm. He mentioned about something, I think, which we take like mm. peace and security. Yeah. We have a coffee farm in the Ik, mm. Karamoja. About five years or maybe seven years, I had stories. People who used to go there, mm. hey, Karamoja would look at your, at your car Take and what's just target. Mm. Just target. Not uh, uh, you yeah. understand? You want to target his. Yes. See how his gun what? works. Mm. But I've been to Karamoja in the Ik community. Mm. At 10? Mm. No, no reachable areas. You don't see anyone. Even mm. if your car gets runs out of water or fuel, mm. you sleep. So really, peace and security, mm. me as a business person, mm. I know what that means. If thank you don't you. know, mm. you may need to ask me. We, we won't need I to thank go there. You. Honorable, uh, thank you so much, Nelson. Honorable, um, this means a lot. He has alluded to quite a lot of things, and I see Sandra getting smiley because things are coming there. As we're finalizing for the online people, um, what is government commitment about innovation? He has tapped something to do with the value addition, but in an innovative way. Our generation is a feel-good generation. I want to innovate something, an app that can bring together all coffee farmers, where they can find their, their, their market price, where they can find the right markets, even the right seller. Everything coffee on one app. We want to hear what is government saying about this. What can government commit in regards to innovation going forward? Thank you very, very much. When you say that uh, peace and security in Karamoja, I was looking at Godba's hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
My good friend got but did not clap. I wanted him to clap. He didn't. <laughs> Godba, as a farmer, he appreciates. <laughs> okay. On the other divide, you will talk. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I just, <laughs> thank, I just wanted us to know that Godba is in the room. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, what is government's commitment? As yes. you know that innovation, we've taken it serious, and thanks to our president, who is visionary, he's mm. looked at this, analyzed it, and decided to have a separate ministry mm -hmm. of innovation oh, yes. and uh, science innovations and uh, we are just enhancing its budget mm -hmm. it's a new ministry and uh, you know uh, dr musemero mm -hmm. is a is a is a minister for for science and innovations mm -hmm. and uh, that's where the, the the house is going to be for innovations and we're supporting them okay. and we just have to give them more budget uh, to support innovations. Young Ugandans are very, very intelligent. They have come up with so many innovations. Mm. The only thing that we need to do is to give them port. And really, indeed, we've started, and as, as you... And we're looking at the Ugandans who are coming with innovations. Mm. And that's why... Professor Guang mm. and Lamar in Gulu, among yes. others, mm. Professor Mwaswa, supporting all. Mm. And let's make money. I want to tell you I'm the Minister of Investment, but I'm also an investor because uh -huh. I decided to go into manufacturing. Mm. I manufacture five different products. <laughs> uh, and it's not a sin to make money. Don't <laughs> say that you should <laughs> not make money. Uh, actually, the reason why, uh, 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 why some people fought me and said, no, she must not go back in politics mm. is because they saw I'm becoming rich at a younger age. Oh, yes. I started, I have a business. Uh, I mean, in, uh, I joined, I, I learned from my good friend, uh, Wekesa, mm. that there's money in the hospitality industry. Mm. I ventured in the hospitality industry. Mm. Then from hospitality industry, I said, no, why don't I add value on our palm oil? Oh, yes. And I'm making laundry bar soap. Mm. Why don't we add value on our, our share butter? I make body Vaseline. Mm. I, and, and I'm very happy to see that now you're even making those, making other byproducts from mm. coffee. So this is what we should do, and this is the language you should speak as young mm. people. It's not a lot of money. It's not rocket science to mm -hmm. start manufacturing. We used to think that this is uh, manufacturing is for the, the white-colored skinned people, the mm. Indians, the Chinese. No, I am happy that Ugandans have now understood, and I want to tell you as government, mm. 
we are deliberate, we support local investors, and I am here as the minister responsible. We give land, where Kesa will attest. <laughs> <laughs> and he's proud, because he didn't steal the land. Oh, yes. And uh, if you were out there and you're watching and you want to get land from government to start your business, mm. come, we will give it to you. Wow. If you want an incentive, tax mm. incentive, your plant and machinery, you want to bring it in the country. Yes. My sister here is talking about plant and machinery that she has to invest 50 billion. Yes. Actually, we can support you, direct you to private sector foundation to mm. get for, for you a grant. Wow. And the ED private sector foundation is here. You'll get the money wow. because government has invested. This is government now speaking. I hear you. Thank you. Well, for those watching us on NTV, I really want to thank you so much. This conversation is still ongoing. My friends in the Zoom, please stay in.